Welcome to the Year 10 Video 1, preparation for the Term 4 task coming up and we're running through the logarithm laws today. Welcome. Okay, log law 1 says that uh, log a plus, uh, log ax plus log ay, if they're being added separately, we can actually turn them into one, the one logarithm expression and have, instead of the plus, we've kind of got a multiply in there instead. So plus makes things bigger and so does multiply. So that makes a bit of sense. Now each of these log laws can be expressed in the other direction. Many a question, probably about half the questions, have you um, turning a product here into two separate logs so it can simplify with something else in the question. And when we do that, when we separate um, a product into two separate bits, the X and the Y, we've got a plus in between instead. So that allows us to either join things into the one logarithm or separate things into two different logarithms. Moving on. Log law two is a similar thing except with minus and divide happening. If you've got separate logarithms with a minus in between them, they can join and become a divide. So minus and divide are sort of related. They both make things smaller. In the same way, we can go the other direction here. We've got uh, a division that's happening here, and we can write it as separate logarithms, one here and one here, with a minus in between. Log law 3 involves an indice. If you've got something to the power of n here, the log law suggests that we can take that power and put it down the front and become the multiplication. So that n has become, uh, instead of an indice, it's a front thing that's multiplying by the rest of the log. Uh, just as I said with the other one, we can go in exactly the other direction. If you've got something in front of a log, you can take it up there and it can become a power. Pretty versatile law that, particularly for square numbers like 16 or 25 and that sort of thing. Alrighty, now we've got a few other, that's, uh, that's the three main log laws. We've got a few other log properties that we'll go through now. And I'll show you some examples here. We've got log to the base A, this is called our base down here. Uh, log to the base AA sort of asks, what power have I got to put this A to in order to get this A? And so this A to the power of 1 will become A. That's why we've got a, a 1 there. So if we have anything with the same base, log to the base 5, 5 will equal 1. Log to the base 2, 2 will equal 1. Because uh, we've got to put, because 5 to the 1 becomes 5 and 2 to the 1 becomes 2 there. Okay, this is an interesting one. If you've got log to the base A, A, this section here is equal to 1. But there's a rule in between here. Remember that rule that says x can come down the front here. That indice can come down the front. So we would have halfway through x log x out the front of log a a. Now if this section here equals 1, you can see that we're just left with x times 1 here, which leaves us with the x. So we can use that third log law of bringing the x out the front to make that happen. This uh, third property here, this one here, log to the base A1, where it's kind of asks what power have we got to put the base of A2 to, to get 1? And you can see in this little section here, A to the 0 would equal 1. So when we answer that question, what power have we got to put A2 to, to get 1? Our answer is 0. That's because anything to the 0, x to the 0, always equals 1. So that's the what that law is based on. Okay, now this is a weird sort of result, but in between this first bit, where we've got log to the base a1 on x, we could in interpret that as log to the base a x to the minus 1. 1 on x is x to the minus 1. And then we could kick in that indice rule we've been talking about, whereby an index can come down the front, so that can equal uh, minus 1 times log to the base a x 
and then that's pretty much what uh, the form of our answer is there. So uh, in the next video, we'll run through some actual number um, examples of that. I've shown you a few examples there, but we'll get some more practice in the next video. But that's a quick run through of all the log laws, the first three log laws, and a few interesting usable log properties that are pretty frequent. Thanks for listening.